Well, let's get more now with uh, Professor Jonathan Ball, who's a virologist at the University of Nottingham in the United Kingdom. Thank you very much for speaking to us, Professor. Uh, this study seems to prove that COVID-19 is airborne. Is that something that you yourself had suspected already? Well, I think there's a, a, a great, there has been a great deal of interest in whether or not the, this virus can be spread by very, very small droplets. We always knew that it could be carried by large droplets such that you produce when you cough or you sneeze. But it was always uh, up in the air, as it were, whether it could travel on these very, very small droplets that can drift and float in the air for, for, for long periods of time and also travel long distances. Uh, and I think what's suddenly uh, changed is the fact that we... We know that people who have um, asymptomatic infections, so they don't cough or they don't sneeze because they don't have symptoms, and yet we think they might be responsible for some of the spread that we see with this virus. And therefore, the only uh, way really that the virus could spread in those people is if it's traveling on these these smaller droplets. But it, it's not as clear cut as, as, as maybe this sin, uh, single study suggests. So do you think there's a, a, a chance, therefore, that if this is airborne, someone at home with the window open or someone walking down the street could uh, get the virus? Or is it more, is the scope of the study more about enclosed spaces? Yeah, no, it's definitely more about closed spaces. We know that uh, outside the, the risk of transmission is massively reduced because you have a huge dilution effect. Uh, if you think when you're outdoors, there's a huge volume of air around you, and as you breathe out, or even if you cough, then that uh, th then those virus particles that you might produce get diluted incredibly quickly, and we know that we need a certain number of virus particles to become infected. But then when you move indoors, and there's less air circulation, less dilution effect, then all these, uh, these, these means of transmission might come into play. Uh, and therefore, it is mainly about people in close spaces, in a household with somebody who's infected, or maybe traveling on public transport with somebody infected. And if micro droplet or very small droplet is an important route of transmission, then you know it, it does bring into question how effective uh, masks will be to prevent this sort of transmission event. Yeah, I was going to ask you, I mean, does this change anything as far as guidelines are concerned? I mean, does this mean that masks are still the best way to go or, or whether we don't stand a chance even with a mask? Well, I think what it uh, d does remind us is that we have to be very careful and think about uh, routes of transmission. And, and one of the things that's important with airborne transmission is... If you, if you know it's somebody who's infected, and in particular, think of hospital settings where you have people who are very ill and therefore probably producing lots of virus, and then their chance of producing sufficient virus in that kind of airborne form to, to, to infect and spread to others is increased. Whereas I think we think in um, community settings where people have got mild infection, then maybe it, it's, it's less important. But um, what it, what it does uh, show is that, you know, we, we have to look at the data, we have to look at the evidence and work out just how much uh, that this route of transmission contributes to spread. Because if we think about viruses that are truly airborne, things like measles, we know that they're incredibly contagious. They'll go on to infect on average about 18 people. With COVID, we think it's about three people. And that's one of the reasons I don't think personally that this airborne route is such a major contribution uh, anywhere near as much as contaminated surfaces or inhalation of these larger droplets.